It's been very busy recently in the world of Formula One, with some of the biggest news of all being that the McLaren Racing Team are partnering with a blockchain network to bring out their very own non-fungible token. We'll be going over all the important aspects of that deal a little later, but there's plenty more to talk about, so let's get into it. Will Mercedes' rear suspension tactic help them to glory? This season of F1 has played host to a tantalizing title tussle between Mercedes and Red Bull, with a former currently leading the way in the constructor's standings, whilst the latter's Max Verstappen is just about doing enough to deny Mercedes driver Lewis Hamilton of what would be a historic eighth world championship. With it being so tight between the teams, any small advantage could make the difference, and there's speculation that perhaps Mercedes have found that advantage in their rear suspension system. The Mercedes cars have been tuned so that the back end of the car lowers at high speed, thus reducing the level of drag and boost the top speed of the car. The theory goes that this will enhance Mercedes' performance on tracks with an abundance of straights, such as the recent Turkish Grand Prix, where Hamilton fought back from a 10th place grid penalty to claim 5th place, his teammate Valtteri Bottas winning the race outright. Even the Red Bull boss himself, Christian Horner, has gone on record to claim that the tactic could be quite powerful at straight tracks such as Jeddah, signaling that Mercedes' title rivals have clearly identified the strategy as a threat. Threat. Mercedes boss Toto Wolf has been quick to downplay the influence of the suspension system and you would, wouldn't you? Anything to keep the opposition from catching on. How decisive this will all be in the world championship, however, is something we'll have to wait to see. Is Mazepin's car trying to kill him? Goodness, it has been a rough season for Nikita Mazepin and the Haas racing crew. Their team sitting dead last in the constructors after accumulating an entire zero point so far. In fairness, the team are not the wealthiest in comparison to their rivals and have historically always struggled. But it feels like we're hitting a new low here when a car is sabotaging its driver to the extent that Mazepin's car did in the recent US Grand Prix. First and foremost, there was the fact that the Russian's headrest came loose after only the second corner of the race, securing his vision and making it rather dangerous to even continue racing. Mazepin apparently had to communicate with his team to ask whether there were other cars near near him as he simply could not see with the headrest blocking his mirrors. He then had to make an extra pit stop, adding 30 unnecessary seconds to his time and killing any chance of a successful race within the first lap. The true tragedy here is that he had started the race in good spirits, having qualified at 17 thanks to various penalties to other drivers. But like a tragic comedy, the situation only seems to get worse. Not only did he have his headrest to contend with, supposedly throughout the race, his feet were burning. The Haas team had been left mystified by all of this and are desperately trying to figure out what's going wrong besides, well, everything. A race to forget it for Alpine. Haas wasn't the only ones who suffered a horror show in the States. However, as Alpine also endured a particularly disappointing race in the U.S. Grand Prix, having been enjoying a 15 race streak of finishing in the points, the team had a perfectly good reason to be confident. But as the Alpine boss, Marcin Bukowski, said, himself, pretty much everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Firstly, Esteban Ocon was forced to retire before the end of the race after a first lap collision with Antonio Giovinazzi, a massive disappointment to a racer who had finished in the points for six of the previous seven races. The pain didn't end there for Budkowski's men. However, as Fernando Alonso was left incredibly frustrated by the end of the race, having qualified 19th due to a grid penalty, the Spaniard fought bravely to claw his way to within touching distance of the points, an achievement made even more important by his teammate having to bow out earlier in the race. Unfortunately, he came off worse in two separate battles with Alfa Romeo's drivers Raikkonen and Giovinazzi. The former passed him by going wide on the turning, but was not forced to give the place back, whilst the latter Alonso passed by going wide, only to be forced to give the place back. Towards the later stages of the race, Alonso's wing mirror then sustained damage, he was forced to retire going on to claim that the rules are a bit random. Alonso's sour grapes and Haas's attempts at murdering their own driver aside, it's now time to get into the headliner here, the recent news of McLaren's investment into their very own NFT. What could this mean for the future of the sport? Will we see other teams follow suit? All these questions and more will be answered right now. What is an NFT? For those not entirely in the know, an NFT, non-fungible token, is similar to other blockchain crypto 
cryptocurrencies, but differs in that each NFT is totally unique. For a quick example, you can own multiple Bitcoins, but can only ever own one of each type of NFT. Think of them like trading cards, where only one version of each card exists. If you know how absurd the value of rare trading cards get, you know where this is going. NFTs can take form in various mediums, but the most popular at the moment are pieces of digital art. To give an idea of just how insane the market is, an 8-bit style image called CryptoPunk number 7523 recently sold for over $11 million. Of course, anyone can save a piece of digital art, but what's really being traded here is the ownership itself. It's like owning the original version of a fancy painting, just, you know, even more ridiculous. What deal have McLaren made? So McLaren have reached an agreement with the blockchain network Tezos, establishing what is being called the McLaren Racing Collective, an online platform where users will be able to purchase digital collectible NFTs. The first of these will be 22 components of the team's MCL35M car, the idea being that fans are challenged to digitally build the full car by collecting each of the components. McLaren have promised that the first fan to successfully build the car will win a VIP ticket to one of McLaren's races in 2022, and that there will be further NFT campaigns to follow. Why exactly are they doing all this? Well, Formula One is one of the most watched sports on the planet, and with the exploding popularity of the NFT market, multiple teams are starting to see it as an opportunity to engage and interact with their fan bases, to create even further buzz about the sporting brands themselves. Mercedes have already jumped on this bandwagon, and Red Bull are also in talks with Tezos, so there's clearly growing interest from numerous F1 teams. Wouldn't be a surprise to see more teams follow the lead of Mercedes and McLaren, attempting to break into the NFT market for the increased exposure it'll provide. Vettel's stunning comeback. We've talked a lot about those who had a torrid time at the US Grand Prix, so let's switch gears to a positive note and discuss the heroics from Sebastian Vettel in Austin. The German headed into the event having qualified in 18th, giving him a huge mountain to climb if he wanted to claim any points for the Aston Martin team, but Vettel proved that his mountain was there to be climbed. Taking something of a risk by using a two-stop strategy, Vettel relied upon the durability of the medium tires he used for his first two stints on the track, and it really paid dividends as his rivals struggled with wear far more than he did. This advantage allowed him to snatch 10th place, the final points position, completing a rather remarkable stateside comeback. Drivers assured freedom in Qatar. And finally, Qatari Motorsport Chief has assured F1 drivers that they will not be silenced during their time in Qatar. Statement issued in response to the growing concern ahead of F1's first ever event in the country. Amnesty International have labeled the Qatar Grand Prix an attempt at sports washing and have encouraged all F1 drivers to use their platforms to speak out against the human rights abuses plaguing the country. al Manai has promised that the drivers are free to speak their minds and that Qatar has been open to criticism, though regardless, the event remains is a controversial talking point with the host nation accused of many human rights violations, including enforced labor that has led to the deaths of workers within the country. With such a grave state of things, I think we can all agree it's important that the drivers follow Amnesty's advice and lead the way in calling for change. And that's your dose of the latest F1 news. Are you going to get in on McLaren's NFT scheme? Will Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes' rear suspension be enough to lead them to victory over their Red Bull rivals? Do you think Mazepin will manage to get out of the next Grand Prix alive? We'd love to hear your thoughts, so be sure to interact in the comments. And until next time, drive safely.